Hello and welcome. Today we're looking at the pentadectile limb for GCSE biology. We can start off by looking at a whale. Now a whale obviously swims in water, so you can imagine there it's got to have structures that help it swim. And one of the structures is this thing here, which is its flipper, which will help it to swim through the water and change direction and so on. If we were to imagine what the bone structure of the flipper looked like, we might think it's a bit like this. This seems to make sense. Thin, flat, able to move around so it can help the whale to steer through water. But when we actually look at it, it looks a bit more like this. The structure is different to what we might expect. It seems to have these finger-like projections and a couple of bones that seems to be, or seem to be a bit like a wrist. So that's perhaps not what we expected. However, this is based on the idea of what we call the pentadactyle limb. The pentadactyle limb. And, and in the pentadactyle limb, we have a set of bones. Now, this one here, if you were to look at humans, would perhaps be the humerus. On this side is the radius, and here is the ulna. And right at the end there, beyond the little wrist bones, we have five digits. In humans, that's five fingers. So that's the basic structure of what we call the pentadactyle limb. Let's actually look at the bones of a human uh, in the arm, a human arm. So we have the humerus at the top there, and we have the radius and the ulna. And right at the bottom, we have the five digits, which are, as we said, the five fingers that perform all kinds of different tasks for humans. So it has the same basic structure as what we just looked at in the previous diagram. If we look at the whale that we just saw, we can see that it has the equivalent bones in its flipper. It has the radius, it has the ulna, and it has the humerus, but shaped very differently, along with the five digits which are shaped differently to allow the whale to swim. If we were to look at another living thing, this is a bat, again, same bones, but arranged and structured slightly differently to allow the bat to fly. So same bones, different structure, a very different job. In a cat, a lizard, and a frog, again, the same bones appear. They do have different, slightly different shapes, um, but you can see that the basic structure is the same and it allows the cat, the lizard and the frog to use its limbs in a slightly different way to the other living things. Now we could take a look at another type of living thing, a horse, and if you look at the front limb, the front leg of a horse, you might think, well that doesn't seem to follow the pentadactyle limb structure at all. However, if we look back at the fossil record of horses, we could see that about 55 million years ago, this is a fossil of a horse's hoof from about 55 million years ago, or the ancestor of the horse, we can see actually it does have the five-digit structure. Later fossils show the evolution of the hoof. It changes over time. Some of the digits seem to be reduced in size, and one in the middle is increased in size and becomes a lot thicker. This has allowed the horse to adapt to its environment. So as we get closer and closer to today, we can see that the hoof has changed. However, it does follow the pentadactyle limb structure. So even something like the horse has pentadactyle limbs. So let's do a summary of what we mean by pentadactyle limbs. Feel free to make a note along with this part of the video. So pentadactyle limbs, these are limbs with five digits. The word penta in pentadactyle means five. There are five digits at the end of these limbs. They're found in many different species of living thing. For example, mammals. We looked at humans. We looked at bats. We looked at a few others as well. Reptiles, for example, alligators. And we looked at, uh, earlier at a lizard as well, or lizards as well. But not only these types of living things, also things like amphibians. These are things like frogs, toads, and other types of amphibian. These all have pentadactyle limbs. The key thing is, with the pentadactyle limb, is a similar bone structure, but very different uses. Similar bone structure, but very different uses. The uses are things like swimming, gripping, running, and even flying. Similar structure of bones, very different uses. This gives us evidence for evolution. It shows, or it indicates, or it suggests that all these species evolved from what we call a common ancestor. A common ancestor. 
If these limbs did not evolve from a common ancestor, if the ancestors were different, in other words, the species that came before were different, we would likely have a different bone structure for all these different living things. So this gives us evidence for the idea of evolution, that all these living things evolved from species that were common ancestors of the species that we have today. Okay, so that's it, the pentadactyl limb. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.